I'm pretty addicted to my phone. Man, I'm seriously addicted to my phone. Whoa, I'm insanely addicted to my phone. Yikes, I'm overwhelmingly addicted to my phone. Oh my god, I'm fanatically, obsessively addicted to my phone. In this modern landscape where screens have infiltrated nearly every aspect of our lives, it becomes paramount to dissect the true impact they have on our well-being. For a moment, let's set aside the convenience and wonders these devices bring, reducing geographical distances to mere pixels, unfurling a wealth of information at our fingertips. Let's focus on the less apparent consequences, namely, their effects on sleep and mental health. Imagine you are a physician, seeing a succession of young patients troubled by insomnia and heightened levels of anxiety. The common thread among them, you find, is an overindulgence in screen time. The flickering luminosity of these screens, usually held closer to the face than any book ever was, is no benign force. Scientific data suggests that this light disrupts our circadian rhythm, confusing our biological clocks that have been fine-tuned over millennia. It's as if our natural predispositions are being rerouted through a labyrinth of pixels and dopamine hits. You might wonder, what happened to the salubrious effects of a good night's walk or a tete-a-tete -tete with a loved one, moments that require us to be truly present, not merely connected? There is, it seems, an erosion of the very social fabrics that keep us grounded, replaced by virtual threads that are too feeble to bear the weight of human emotion. Now, as a surgeon, one of my preoccupations is precision, be it in incisions or in diagnosis. In the same vein, we must be precise in identifying the side effects of screen time. We find that young minds, more pliable and impressionable, are absorbing this virtual realm as a distorted reflection of reality. When your worth is measured in likes and your social standing is gauged by online followers, the realm of the screen becomes a petri dish for insecurities and anxieties to flourish. The gravitas of the matter should not be underestimated. If this were an epidemic, we would be clamoring for vaccines. If it were pollution, we would be advocating for clean air laws. The remediation, however, is not as straightforward. This isn't a pathogen we can isolate or a pollutant we can filter out. It's a cultural shift, a recalibration of values, if you will. It may be helpful to remember that every action comes with its own ledger of gains and losses. As screens make their way into younger and younger hands, and as adults find themselves increasingly tethered to the digital world, one must consider what is gained and what is forfeited. The digital world is a remarkable tool but let's not be so beguiled by its brilliance that we overlook its potential to dim the lights on aspects of human existence that have illuminated our lives for ages. Screen time isn't just a mere activity, it's a litmus test for a society's values. In moderation, it can be a splendid resource, opening up avenues previously unimaginable. Yet, the consequences of overuse pose questions that extend beyond mere physiology, delving into what kind of life we value and what kind of life we ultimately wish to lead. And it is on that note, of not just health but of values, that we must ponder the trade-offs.